What's up, everybody? Jordan Stewart here from Vova. Thanks so much for tapping into the Vova Original Show. Just a reminder that if you want to drop your opinions about the episode or respond to the host and guests with your voice, go and download the Vova app wherever you get your apps. Vova, voice over everything. Enjoy the show. It's time to level up with Dr. Mondo. What is good, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Level Up with Dr. Mondo. I'm Dr. Mondo, licensed therapist, mental health expert, and uh, CEO and founder of the Cheat Code Foundation. So this podcast is a podcast where we take 20 short minutes. I promise you it's that short drive from point A to point B that you just sit back and listen and you're going to be inspired. You're going to be encouraged. You're also going to feel a sense of solidarity. Solidarity is a, a term we use for times where we feel like, you know what, man, something about what you just said, I'm feeling it. And uh, we as human beings are meant to feel one another. Physically, yes. Also emotionally. This is an opportunity for you to sit back and go, yo, I'm feeling it. And today's guest is someone that you'll feel his story. And if you've heard him, if you, if you know about him, if you know, you know. And if you know about him, you also know that if you listen to his music, you feel in that too. Because God has gifted this man with the ability to play damn near every instrument there is, sing, rap. I mean, you name it, he could do it. Storytell. If you went to his recent show out here in Midtown, he was even throwing some, some prophetic truth at you. I don't know if some of you were ready for that. My guest today is uh, a legend here in Sacramento, and he is soon to be a legend nation and worldwide. His name is Christian Drastic Gates, better known as the Phil Harmonic. Mr. <laughs> Harmonic, how you doing? Sir Harmonic. Good, how are you? Was that, too, was, was that too big of an intro? I had a bigger one even. I was ready to gas you up even even bigger, but was, was that okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you gave the account that I got going on on Facebook, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, my that's, Facebook that's, name. I, I'm even giving i'm even giving facebook facebook government names in the intro uh why do you go by the name the philharmonic everyone wants to know that tell that story it was one of those things where i had to where i grew up in orchestra as a kid and so the name the philharmonic was kind of like from a one-man orchestra piece because i could do it all from the production to the playing the instruments to the writing of the lyrics to the recording to the engineering and uh i actually looked it up maybe a couple of years ago and i looked at the definition in the dictionary and it means devoted to music and that's wow. literally what my life has been wow. at the core it's been devoted to music and so you know, that, i had all the details but i didn't know how to put that in a way that just was short and sweet. And that was short and sweet, devoted to music. That's what it means now to me. Yeah. It, 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 so there's this deeper meaning that you didn't even know was at the core of why you called yourself at that. But also too, I mean, tell people about the instruments you play. And I mentioned earlier, stylistically, um, your, your range is just uh, <laughs> unparalleled, really. I mean, from funk to neo soul, to, to R&B, to hip hop, uh, you know, tell people about the instruments that you, that you're able to play. And when they're hearing some of the tracks off that album, that, uh, you know, your, your first big album, how much of that is your production, you know, you on different. Nobody touched that album, but me, that's the first part. Like I played everything on that album. Um, programmed everything on the album. Um, my musical journey started at the age of six. My mom wanted me to be involved in activities that would help me further down the road. So you know, I think with a lot of parenting, even though I know nothing about it because I don't have kids myself, but I think that it's cool that a lot of parents in those early years, years uh, understand that that it takes an exploration process of trying new things um, in order for a child to feel 
they have purpose in this world as they grow. And so that first journey that my mom took towards those steps was with the piano. And so at five years old, um, she saw me maybe a year prior to that um, playing a melody without having any prior musical ability um, from a concert she took me to uh, maybe like three or four. And she was like, you know what? I think this kid has a gift. So I'm going to go. What was the concert? What was the concert? <laughs> I think it was Michael W. Smith, actually. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Michael McDonald, because I know you're a big, you're, you're low key, a big <laughs> Michael McDonald fan. That, but so at a young age, at a, at a yeah. young age, she saw that in you. Because I mean, truly, man, like there are, there are athletes that we've had on the show. Like we had Mallory Pugh on. And she, was a, she was a soccer prodigy. She was the youngest person to ever join a team USA a team that went and played in the Olympics and world cup and scored a goal. You know, there's something different when you're a prodigy. And I know that that word is big, but I only use it when it fits and it fits for you really, because, and there may be some people just now getting to know your music, even through today in this interview, but uh, truly like you from a young age, your mom saw it and she said, there's something there. And then you become swept up in it. And so in total, what are the instruments that, that you're able to play? Um, piano, violin, guitar, trumpet, um, then trombone a little bit. It's like once you learn the either the woodwinds or the brass, the first instrument you learn, it's really easy to add on to the instruments after that, at least for me. But um, the piano was first, the violin was second, guitar, I little, learned it on my own a little bit. And then fourth was uh, trumpet, which I learned in marching band. And so that's that's really just the essence of, and then bass. I do um, electric bass too. And that's really. Like I said, the name fits on a tangible level to what people think of when they think of the Philharmonic and just all the pieces that go into that that orchestra because he literally is a one man orchestra, but uh, he's, he's literally a life devoted to music in, in that sense of, of the word as well. Um, you know, I think I'll, I'll, I'll say this too, with, with your music and, and let me, let me tell this story and I'll get it out of the way. Cause it should be told publicly. Um, you know, there's a, there's an artist here in Sacramento named Hobo Johnson that if you're from Sacramento, you know about him. He's a famous national artist. And I was hearing a lot about Hobo Johnson, big fan of local Sacramento music. And I'm thinking, who is this guy? Right. So I'm checking him out one day on YouTube. This is about five years ago, checking him out on YouTube. And then, you know, one song that he had rolled into the next, and it's this next song is a track by this guy, the Philharmonic, and it's featuring Hobo Johnson. And I hear this song, Mama's House. And I'm, I'm like, oh, like, this dude from SAC really made it. Hobo really made it because now he's performing with like the real big guys. I'm thinking Philharmonic, like this, this guy, I never heard of him, but man, he is, he's next, he's next level. Start going down a rabbit hole, listening to his music, find out he's from Sacramento. I'm like, what? Philharmonic Sacramento. Um, I want you to give your live reactions to what happens next. So I like my wife knows this about me. I get on kicks whether it's eating Ethiopian food every day <laughs> or listening to something that I like, yo, I became obsessed with your music, bro. Like I heard your music on Spotify. I, I literally became obsessed I, before you know it. I'm sliding in the DMS before you know it for all you out there, unless you want to be called, don't put your number on your Facebook or your Instagram profile. Cause someone crazy <laughs> like me will actually call that number and leave you a message. Like, yo man, just like trying to talk and I'm a big fan and like, I just want to help you out. You know, I was, I, I was, I, I was saying earlier, <laughs> yeah. I was like your stand. I was like, I was like on you because I was so passionate about your music. It spoke to something deep inside of me. I loved the sound. I loved the talent. And then I was also shocked that the world didn't quite know you yet. And that was kind of where a lot of the persistence was coming from. What was it like? to have some random therapist that's 10 years older than you hit you up like that, man. What was going through your mind? You're thinking this, this dude's weird, huh? <laughs> I mean, that was probably maybe like 10 to 20% of the feeling, but okay. That's I low. Like, I thought it'd be higher. 
No, but I mean, it's still, it's still, a, it's still in the ballpark. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we have never, <laughs> we have never managed to eliminate the ten to twenty. Per- I think that's fair, though. I think it's yeah. fair. Well, I think fair. it's healthy. Well, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Always reserve that. <laughs> no, but for, like- but you know, hit, hitting you up like that, man. I, I know it was, it was kind of strange, but but really, it was a it was a place of love. And then once we connected, and we'll get into this now, and like what we found is you know, that there's so many different heart connections that we have. We both have a similar connection in being raised by a single parent mom that worked a lot. We both uh, had connections with a grandfather that had this incredible role that was bigger than the word grandfather, a father figure to us, the fatherless journey, uh, the journey with finding so much comfort in food, the journey in what it's like to be an overweight kid in a weight shaming society as a kid and how that affects our day to day and our construct of ourself and our, in our way that we seek validation and self love, like all of that pours through along with this depth. And Oh, by the way, we have the same birthday. We're 10 days or excuse me, 10 years apart to the same exact day, which is crazy. But you know, when you, when you look at all those things, I think there's a reason I connected with your music because it's amazing, but also there's a deeper reason too, that I think we've connected. It's because we have such similar stories. You talk so much about your story um, and your journey of with your younger self, making peace with that, healing, mental health. Why is that something that you've committed so much of your music to? I think it was because I was trying to find who I was and I didn't feel like I knew who I was. And I, I think there was a lot of voices in my head. And I needed to learn how to articulate that in a way that could not only be understood by others, but most importantly, myself. And, you know, passion is an outlet. It's, it's, it gives abstract ways to really um, show yourself and others how you feel about the world around you, about how you feel yourself, how you deal with perception in the grand scheme of things. Um, It's really, that's really why I talk about mental health because all of it is all the, everything I've created is in my mind. So I have to, you know? And, and, And when people listen to your music and you're someone as committed to vulnerability as you are, it's truly like we're going through that journey with you. You know, I know you're in this, that, first album um there was so much of your heart coming out but you know this the second album which has been highly anticipated and you've kind of pushed back further and further in part i know because not just of what's going on in the world but also in in part because this 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 one that's about to come out like this really is a window into your evolution and your healing and all the parts, like the angry part, the sad part, the hopeful part. So many of your parts are going to come out in this music. So you've almost used your music as a way for all of us to experience that transformation of self and that discovery of self along the journey with you. Mm. Yeah. It's um, that evolution. It takes a while. Uh, I haven't really released it yet because I'm still going through that evolution. And there are lessons that I feel that I need to learn. It's not being too hard on myself. It's exploring myself to the ability of reaching my best self. And um, with a lot, the transition from the last album to this album, there's been a lot of growth. I knew what the album was going to be called as soon as I hit. And that is? Um, Transcendentalism. But I've learned that when you name things, especially creations, life will have you live up to it. And so you will have to go through the processes, the ebbs and the flows, the ups and the downs. And it's one of those things that I am grateful for experiencing because I see the world in a much lighter, vulnerable, healing perspective. I think that I truly see vulnerability as a strength in all. Mm. It's... It's one of those things that I was afraid much more probably before therapy and cheat code. Now mm. it's 
one of my biggest strengths. I've noticed how close I can get to people I care about and cultivate that, that relationship, cultivate areas of my life that I feel like I have neglected and have been neglected, but not knowing how to nurture it. And so now that, you know, when you go through the therapy and you go through the brain spawning, I'm starting to see the beautiful effects of self where I can look in the mirror every day and say, you know, what, I really like this guy and I haven't really felt that. So I thank you, man, for that. I love you, bro. I'm, love I'm, me it, too, makes man. Me, it makes me so yeah. happy to, to hear that. And for some people that, you know, don't know, like it's our, like our, our, our friendship and relationship. It's been interesting. Like there was a journey where we were doing some of that, that healing work together. And, and then there was, there's been a recent trans transition where you started doing it with another one of our cheat code coaches. Um, when you look back at the version of yourself, maybe before, not even just starting the work that, that we did with cheat code, but when you look back at the version of yourself prior to really starting the journey of healing and transcendentalism, um, when you look back at that version now, like if you just saw him walking down the street, what would your first reaction be to seeing him? What, what, what would be going on internally for you? What would you be feeling towards him? I probably would understand his anger more than anything. My younger self was full of that anger, full of uh, resentment for herself. Um, only I, I was just so pessimistic about a lot of things in life. And so, you know, if I even had to go up and say anything to him, I would have to say, you know, like, you're going to have to cry, man. You're going to have to work through it. And it's like, you're just going to have to keep persisting. It's one of those things where I... I would look back on myself. I couldn't really explain the, because the transformation is so radical where I'm starting to see now that uh, you, when you start to go through the transformation, you start to shed the weight of trauma, of baggage, of hardship. Yes. And so, you know, now if it were to experience my younger self, it's just in a simple, well, it's been hard to this dude. It's mm -hmm. been hard, but it gets better. But there's going to be work that has to be done. Yeah. It's beautiful because as you speak to, as you speak to him and it, it gives, it does a couple things. One, it sheds light on where you are today and that place of, you know, involvement and compassion that you have towards others but really it starts with yourself and then it also it also really highlights i think and, and gives people a window there's a lot of people probably listening that have never not i mean sure it takes courage for for certain but there's also a lot of people that never even knew the pathway i mean finding help in this country is a joke you know how do you even get connected to a therapist like what do i like dude what do i like that's the question i get all the time and then like i called someone they didn't hit me back like so I think there's a lot of people out there right now that are hearing this and probably sitting in trauma, but not even knowing where to go, where to go next to hear you being able to relate back to, to that version of yourself that was younger is in many ways relating to them. So as you give that message to your younger self, really it's giving that message to everyone that's not quite started their healing journey. And if you get more specific with it too, Christian, and talk about what were some of the biggest things that you had to cry about and face in your healing journey so far? Um, rejection. Um, a lot of rejection. I had to cry about loneliness. I've had to cry about... Um, my obesity. I had to cry about having lack of creativity, criticism, um, being made fun of, molestation as a child, mm -hmm. um, physical abuse, neglect, abandonment. I've had to grieve a lot. This it's been it's been this year. 
I think a lot of it's been this year, last year, just the the pandemic. I would have kept running if we were just doing the same old, same old status quo. Let's go to the bar every week. Let's go and do these shows. This shit feels good. Sorry. <laughs> but oh, you let it fly. Yeah. And it's, you know, having time to sit down. Um, it's, yeah, I had, t- I had time to grieve probably for the first time, grieving death of loved ones that I held dear to my heart that I never got to express before leaving that I held a lot of resentment towards because I didn't know how to, I didn't, couldn't afford to go see them. There's a lot of things I've grieved probably in the last year, a lot. It's like I I envision as you share all that, and I appreciate big time you sharing that because that's a lot to put out there, but it's also, it's also, again, once again, like showing where you're at in your journey, that you're able to talk about it like you are. It's also really inspiring for people out there that may have said yes to half the things you said or one or two of the things you said and never really heard anyone acknowledge it out loud, especially someone they look up to. So I think that's amazing. What, what I envisioned, man, is, as you were sharing that is almost like, um, it's like a jar full of stuff like almost like you know some are butterflies they're just they're just they're they're insects they're whatever they're gonna fly out but the minute you you lift the top off they all came and i think we we do ourselves a disservice sometimes because we're not taught that just because the, the just because time passes doesn't mean that we've healed because time does heal all wounds if here's the disclaimer if we are open to taking the lid off the jar and acknowledging what's in there. And I think it's amazing how, like you said, the things that you mentioned, the losses and things like that, a lot of the grief that you were doing, the, the, the dealing with all the abuse, all those things, those were things that happened years prior, Yeah, but we still carry it because the body keeps the score. I mean, isn't yeah. it such a big misconception that pe- people really don't understand? They think because it was in the past, that it's not affecting them, but man, like it affects us, right? It, it was affecting you. Yeah. JC actually said in the song, you can't heal what you never reveal. It's like, yeah. And that's real. That's, that's real. Very, very real. And so, you know, feeling that opening that jar and for so over time, so time can heal those wounds in that time you're doing reflection you're doing grieving there's a lot of stuff that you it's active work it's active facing of that friction um it's active it's something it's like when you're it's like you you've been in the gym and you're lifting weights and you're not just doing 10 at a time but you're going until failure that's how it feels where the weight becomes so strong that you have to stop. And that is, that, that's the way that you heal. That's the way that you get stronger is you're going to have to keep lifting that weight. And then once you can't lift it anymore, you know, that's when you, that it's a breakthrough. Over time, you start to learn your muscles start to get stronger. You start to keep, be able to carry more weight, start to be able to lift more weight. And that's, that's literally how the healing is, but it's like, yeah, you got to still go to the gym and you still got to lift the weight. And that's how healing works. It's like, unless you're doing it, not unless you're doing the work, it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You don't, you don't get yeah. like a cert- certificate for completion of the healing journey until you're at the pearly gates, man. Like you, you're not going to, yeah. e- even with all the work that you've done, and, and I, you know, I, I've done it too. Like, I know that we both find that we talk about this, like, man, we're still bumping into new things, but more often than not, we're bumping into the same old damn things we already bumped up into. We already healed a lot of it. Right. And, and yeah, it's transformed, but sometimes it, it, it pops back up in times of stress and times of chaos and times of doubt. Um, and so the healing journey, I love how you put that is like, it is like, you, you got to stay in the gym. You got to stay talking it out with 
with someone. You got to stay in a community that's vulnerable and real, that loves you, that supports you. Uh, it's a life committed. It's a lifestyle change in the same way they say when you get healthy, the only way it works is if you change your lifestyle. It's the same way with your emotional health. You have yeah. to change your lifestyle. And, 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 there, and there are going to be some people that just are not with that program in the same way they might not be down with maybe supporting some of your physical lifestyle changes. But if it's really about you doing it for you, an act of self-love, which I know you talk a lot, a lot about, sometimes is just making that commitment and doing it. I, I know, I know we're, we're at overtime already, but I want to ask you this. You have such a big gift that God has given you. You have, you know, a superpower in your ability to use music to communicate your story and touch people. But, you know, also just what you create is so tantalizing to the senses in terms of the music. What are, when I ask you this question, someone asked me this one, so I want to ask you this. What are you going to use your superpower or your gift for? Like, what are you planning at your core? What's your purpose with the gift you've been given? How are you going to use it to impact the world? Um, it's just going to do it to be my best self. That's first of all. And therefore, I change my perspective. And therefore, I build the world I want to see. One of connectivity, one of unconditional love, one of relationships, and just learning in time as I evolve how to get closer to that um, that world that I see. I don't I don't hold the the gift as as something that I use merely for personal gain and and for greed for connectivity that I long for to connect all of self. Uh, the talent doesn't really just do it for me. Talent, and my talent and my purpose. Um, it's just the tool. It's like a money. It's a tool in order to build the the thing that I want to see. Um, it's and that's really the gist of it for me. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about, um, gosh. Uh... You talk about that in one of the, what's, what's the song we talk about? So there's, um, on your first album about like almost that vision of what the communities will, will be like and no more shooting, shooting. And well, I, I forgot which song that is. I'll have to go back to it. But, it's but mama's house. It is mama's house. It's, <laughs> it it's the end. Yeah. 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 What are those, what are those lyrics that you, that you, that you say at the end? Yeah. Cause that's kind of like the vision of what you're saying. I literally forgot the lyrics because I haven't performed <laughs> that song in forever. Look at me, but I'm putting you on the spot. You go, go look it up. Uh, but, but basically it is, and I know your heart, you also started recently. Is it a nonprofit that you started or an LLC that you started with, with an, with an idea of, of kind of helping the collective of people? Yeah. It's called, we do it for the kids. Um, I'm working on it, um, in tandem with trying to keep up with everything else. But um, I started the LLC with it, but with uh, five other guys where I wanted, I felt when you go through the career and you go through, through just the, the process of that, there, there's, I feel like when you start coming into self, you have the ability, the capacity spiritually, emotionally to give back, to, to keep the balance of the net going coming from the oh i'm that person now i gotta be the og come back in teach and so you know i love to teach as much i love to talk as much as i like to play music as you can see <laughs> <That's the laughs> i wouldn't be on this show <laughs> you know so but it's about yeah like you said i love that it's about starting because you're still i mean your career is still taking off and so I love the idea that even as your career takes off, you're already putting intentional roots in place to say, I'll keep the main thing, the main thing, which, yeah, it's about seeing this thing through and being as successful as possible. But really it's about setting a legacy now or a frame for a legacy now and saying like, this is going to be bigger than me. And, you know, by creating this now and, and, and setting it up, it allows you to really keep yourself 
kind of accountable to that because it's easy to get swept up and lost in the journey. Um, I'll, I love it, man. I'll give this last piece before we head out. When it comes to purpose and when it comes to having a big platform, the most important thing is to know who you are because when you know who you are, you know what you want. And once you know what you want, you know how to manifest the life you want to see. That is, that's my wisdom. Chill that. Chills, chills down the right leg. Let me see. Here comes the left. Yep. I got, I got the right and the left going on that. That that's, that's, that's some, that's some truth. And, uh, if you want to hear more truth, this album's coming out. Um, when's, when, Probably March. when do you think it's coming? March of next year. March, March of next year. year. March of 2022. I have, I have a surprise before then. I have a surprise project that I'm really seeing before then. I'm just we're going to drop that like just on the way out. There's a surprise, but when will we know more about the surprise project? It's coming through. I'm, I'm working. I'm grinding. <laughs> stay, stay on him. He, he spells out his name so eloquently. It's almost like he, he, he's flowing when he does it. What's your IG handle so people could stay up with you so they could unwrap the surprise when you, when you finally hand it out to the masses? Yeah, it's the Philharmonic. Uh, it's T H E P H I L H A R M O N I K. I'm literally the same on all Everything. platforms. Yeah. Yeah. It's a clear representation of who you are as a person vulnerable, transparent, honest, keep it real. Philharmonic, thank you for joining me so much here today, man. Go, go check this man out. Um, and, and while you're at it, too, uh, go check out his music on Spotify and iTunes. Also, check out on YouTube. He was on Sway in the Morning. This dude could do it all. And oh, by the way, his favorite artist is Stevie Wonder. So you can yeah. say, yeah, can, can this he know? And he knows <laughs> like old school. Old, I'm, I'm not talking. Um, I just called to say, I love you, Stevie Wonder. This is like, th th this is the real Stevie Wonder. This anyway, that's Stevie, the whole, the 70s, that's yeah. the 70s Stevie. <laughs> yes. he, he's, th this, this, this man's funky. So anyway, go, go check out my man, the Philharmonic. Uh, love you so much, bro. Appreciate you so much. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, bro. It's time to level up with Dr. Mondo.